Hello, friends. Welcome to the Second Phase Podcast. I'm your host, Robin Graham, a certified brand strategist and business coach. You might be wondering why the second phase? The second phase may be a change in careers and learning how to navigate the world of entrepreneurship, a significant lifestyle change, going from stay at home parent to starting a business, a traumatic loss, a move, or an illness. It could be any number of things. No matter the definition, you are here to discover your second phase. Learn about creating a personal brand that stands out and makes an impact, to grow as your authentic selves and follow your callings, values, visions, and passions, and to learn how to build a solid foundation for long-term brand and business success. Through interviews and solo episodes, we'll be diving into inspiring stories, life and business journeys of failure and success, and the strategies and tools used along the way. Ready to learn? Grab your coffee, the car keys, or the dog's leash, and let's dive in to this episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I have a very special guest here with me today, Moira Nee Gallagher. I think I said that right. I may not have, but she will correct me if I'm wrong. But before we dive into our conversation with Moira, I want to talk a little bit about some updates that we have going on in the back end of my business. So as you probably noticed, I paused the Facebook group, the Female Entrepreneur Insider, for the past couple of months. I reopened it and it has a new name called the Purpose to Results Facebook group for Christian women and entrepreneurs. So I invite you to head over to Facebook and join the group. I'm going to be doing a lot more trainings in there. We're going to be doing a lot more focused trainings. So I invite you to pop over there and just introduce yourself and join in talk, mingle, build relationships with the like-minded people that are in that group. I think it's going to be a really powerful place going forward. So I encourage you to go over and join that. The other thing I just want to remind you is to join the email list. Every single Monday, I send out a journaling prompt for the week to keep your mind fresh and and focused and positive throughout the course of your week. We all go through ebbs and flows, positive mindset, negative emotions, especially when we have any type of negative thought. So Monday mornings, that'll pop into your inbox and it'll get your week started off on the right foot. So those are my two housekeeping issues before we dive in. Now, Moira is a person... I think very dynamic, beautiful person who helps thousands of women become unstoppable in their voice, impact, and financial freedom. We're going to be talking today to you, you high achieving women who want to change your life and the world. And Moira is going to help us do that by helping us really find our voice so that we can create the lifestyle and the business of our dreams. So without further ado, Moira, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Thank you so much, Robin. What a brilliant intro. It's great to be here. Well, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and insight and sharing yourself with us all the way from Ireland. That is super exciting to me as I just, as I told you before, we traveled there this summer and I absolutely fell in love with the country. And I don't know that I will ever in my entire life drive there, but (laughs) <laughs> I did love it. <laughs> That's good. I love to hear that. It is a brilliant country. It is truly, I think it's magnificent. I love living here. Well, yeah. when I do here, I travel a lot. Yeah. Which is part of what we're going to talk about today is creating that life that you so desperately want and to have the freedom to live the way you want to live and not be tied to an office or, you know, tied to expectations from a boss or some sort of organizational structure. So before we talk about everything we're going to talk about, tell us a little bit about you and your journey to get to where you are today, because it's been remarkable and I think it's very inspiring. Mm. Well, I certainly always, I wasn't always somebody who spoke. In fact, growing up, the words shut up were the words I heard the most. And I'm sure there's many of your listeners that can relate. Like I was really taught to keep my thoughts and my ideas to myself. And I think I spent most of my school years standing outside classroom doors because I was in trouble for talking too much. And I even remember one teacher even saying to me one day, it was like, Maura, you know, you're never going to make anything of your life if all you want to do is talk. 
So these days when I drive by my old school and my brand new car and like I'm on my way to the airport for a speaking gig, I really chuckle to myself. So I do. I was just like, wow, how many times I was told that speaking wouldn't do anything for me. And it turned out that it was the one thing that was going to help me launch a business and create a lifestyle that really is beyond my imagination from what I thought before I got into business. Wow, that's impressive. And I love how and we've had other people on the show say the same thing, how they were told something when they were little and they completely conquered that thought that somebody put in their head. And I just love that so much. It's so empowering mm-hmm. to hear people do that. Okay, so tell us about your business. Mm -hmm. So I work with female entrepreneurs, mostly coaches and consultants. So these are really mission driven women who want to build a top tier income and a lifestyle from speaking on stages. And it's what I call these days a destiny driven business, because I really do believe that there's a business that you can have. But there's also something that you're destined to have. And every action that we take every day in our businesses to grow it is either getting us closer to it or it's taking us away from it. And I truly believe that speaking is the fastest way to really fulfill on your destiny and help the people that need to hear your message. Okay, so the listeners know that I've had this incredible fear of public speaking. Anybody who has read my book, you know, I tell the story of how it literally was so debilitating. I had to drop out of my doctorate program. I did go back. I did the talk. I finished. And today I happily take the stage, still get very, very nervous, but it's something when that I found when you're passionate about something, it's easy to talk about no matter the size of the audience. So I think it's important to recognize, and I want Mm -hmm. to emphasize here and have you kind of help and guide the listeners that, you know, you may have that fear of speaking, but here's what speaking can do for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For me, it's like one of your most powerful marketing tools. Like if it's used correctly, it can be your entire marketing strategy. So when women get into business, especially like we're just overwhelmed with all the things we need to learn, all the tactics, all these complicated things, when actually we have a voice. And I truly believe if we put our heart and soul into getting our voices out in front of the people that need to hear us, that is your marketing strategy. And actually your voice feeds into everything in your business, but it tends to be something that's on the list that people will get to someday. I may start speaking, et cetera, et cetera. But in actual fact, they are speaking on a daily basis. They're probably speaking to a room full of a family around the table. They're speaking to their groups of clients at one time. Sometimes I've even spoken to podcast hosts, Robin, who didn't consider themselves as speakers. And you're like, well, of course you're a speaker, right? You're speaking for a living. But I think a big part of this is really taking on the identity of being a speaker. And I think if you're an entrepreneur, you're a leader and leaders are expected to speak. So if you're like thinking you want to change the world, you can't do it in a vacuum. You can't do it neatly, you know, hidden away in the corner or in your office. You've got to get your voice out there. And people want, I don't believe that people want, you know, superhuman speakers anymore. I don't believe that people want like ex spokes models and things like that. I think people are crying out for real people who are vulnerable, who have made mistakes, but have also come through that because that's so much more relatable. And this isn't about being polished or perfect. This is just about being real. And I think people are crying out for people that are real on stage, as opposed to people that have had these amazing like lifestyles or celebrity and things like that. I think that's the old way, to be honest. Mm, I love that, that we as the average person who, yes, we're high achieving, we are leaders, but we're we're not in the limelight, but this is our way to communicate, to share who we are, what we do, how we do it, and who we serve, and serve at the same time that we're doing that, making that impact that can help change not only our lifestyle, but the world, which I think is so, you know, so many of us strive to do that. Yeah. And, you know, what you were saying about the fear of speaking, I think one thing that really helped me, because I, like, Growing up being told to shut up, don't think that I wasn't afraid when I first got on the stage. It was like, oh my God, what the hell is going on here? This is crazy. My body was like just having this whole like circus going on. But that one thing that really helped me, Robin, was to stop considering it on such a big scale. Like you said, the world, think about it in terms of my world. My world being my business, my followers, my audiences, my people, because there are people out there that are assigned to you. And that's not going to be billions of people. But if you just bring it down to that nice 
group that's in your world and focus on them, then it really brings the the fear and the energy down to, ah, and it makes it more coming from a place of serving. And I think when we think about speakers and big arenas and things, that can send us into all sorts of panic attacks. But when you just think about your world and how big your world is now. I love that. Get, and it will get that. bigger if you get on stages as well. But it will get bigger as you get better. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. Okay. So let's talk about, that's a great reframe, I think, for any of us who have experienced fear with speaking, how to use our voice by thinking of those people that we're serving. So let's talk about how we do that now. So we kind of have that reframe. So now you have like a four step, four thought type process that you use that you call the lifestyle plan, but that is broken down into four things, message, talk, story, offer. So let's talk about that. And then I would love for you to tell us, okay, now we're going to do this. How do we do it? How do we get these opportunities to be on a stage? Yeah, let's I think do that the, first. The most important place for an entrepreneur to start is their message. Like, what mm-hmm. is your message to the world? What is unique about it? So if somebody hears it, they're going to say, oh, I want that or I need that or you're exactly who I need to work with. So a mark, it needs to be and I'm sure you're an expert in this already, Robin, but it really needs to be really dialed in. And from there, you create the talk. And the message is at the core of your talk. And I am not a believer in needing to have 20 talks or 30 talks. I built my business to multiple six figures from having one talk, but I took that talk to different audiences. So you have a message, you create a talk, and then you want to have an offer. So what is it that you can offer the audience then that would make them want to connect with you by the end of your talk? And sales are then made on the back end, especially when you're starting out with speaking. And of course, you want to be able to tell your story in a way that really reaches the hearts of the people that are listening to you. And you're remembering that your story is never about you. Your story is about your audience through you. So they need to see yourself in the story. So this is where you want to get rid of all the details and just get to the core of it. And you should be able to tell it in at least two to three minutes maximum. And then from there, you have a toolkit now to go out there and reach audiences and gather warm, qualified leads. And then the question becomes is, where do you want to go? Where in the world would you like to speak? And I'm a firm believer, if you want to speak in Ireland when you come here the next time, Robin, there's a stage for you in Ireland. If you want to, if somebody's listening, they want to come and go and speak in the UK, there's a stage for you in the UK. But decide on where that is. And maybe for some people listening, it's just local. And I think local is a perfect place to start. I started in my local library resource centers, local festivals, and it grew from there. And I only got bigger stages from being on smaller stages. And that's another breakthrough I think people can have in terms of having the fear of speaking. You probably won't get invited to speak on a big stage unless you're seen on a smaller stage. So you want to make all your mistakes in the local library. (laughs) You want to make all your mistakes around people that are not going to be like, oh my God, when the stakes are low, make the mistakes when the stakes are low. I think all too often people wait for that big opportunity. They've never done it before. And then you go on stage and they make a big mistake. They might even have paid for that stage. And that's a huge mistake. So start small. And the small stages, those can be in anywhere in the world as well. And not to overlook small because I've made as much as 85,000 from a room of 10 people when I was promised hundreds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something to be said for that. And I think, you know, you can go into something and think to yourself, I'm not sure if this is my ideal audience. Okay, number one, why would you do it if you don't know that it's your ideal audience? But number two, there is always opportunity to connect with an ideal audience person from your audience. And, you know, I love to change people's mindset around that, to change the perspective that every single person in a room may be your ideal audience. Like you can't differentiate that just by who you think is going to be there because you don't know what their story is and how your story is going to resonate with them and their journey that they're on. Okay. So, okay. So now we talked about all of that and about, you know, starting small, getting on the bigger stages not paying to get on a stage. Is that what I heard you say? Yeah, I looked for small free stages to begin with. 
paying to speak on a stage is a really powerful thing to do for your business, but it's not for somebody who's never spoken before. And all too often, I come across women who have a dream of speaking, an opportunity comes up and they pay 5000 or 10000 to get an opportunity to speak in front of these people. They're not prepared. They have never made an offer. They've never told their story, but it's because it's a dream they do it. So I don't advise that you pay for a stage until you're really you're really clear that you've got all of your pieces dialed in. Look for free stages. And then like th- that's the model of speaking I use. Of course, you can get paid to speak. But here's the thing about getting paid to speak. If nobody knows you, your fee can't be that high, right? So you're starting off at $1,000 or maybe not even $1,000, where if you have a 5K offer in your business and you speak at an event and you get two clients, well, you've made 10000 How long would it take for you to get paid 10000 as a fee? So I call these free stages, Robin, lifetime value stages, because there is a lifetime of value in these small free stages that are right in front of our noses. They're all around the virtual world and they're all around your locality. And when you start opening your eyes to them and see that, well, if I could get two or three clients every time I spoke, if you did that once a month for a year, that would be like 30 clients. Like do Mm -hmm. the math. You have a 5k offer, like you're going into the multiple six figures then. And that's Mm -hmm. literally how I grew my business. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. Okay, so a couple of questions that I was thinking of. So you talk about the so the talk, the message, the talk, the story, and the offer. And you mentioned the story part is like three minutes. How much emphasis is on the other three parts of the talk? I'm sorry. Like how much time is this talk that we're crafting that is those four parts? Message, talk, story, offer. I think these days the average time you're going to get to speak is around 30 minutes. So if you break that down and you have your story for two to three minutes, then you have your three points. Let's say you do seven minutes for each point. Now we're up at about 24 minutes and then you leave yourself longer at the end. If you have an offer, never leave it to the last minute because that's a huge mistake that entrepreneurs make. They give so much value and then they forget why they're there. You're there to gather leads and you're there to inspire, of course, but you need to use this to grow your business as well so then we're up at about what 20 what 20 25 minutes give yourself three minutes for your offer and then you two minutes left over you're better to finish early yes. than to go to time always all right so let's talk about talking about that offer at the end because that is something that i think for a lot of us is intimidating because it's sales basically <laughs> and how many people you know are fearful of sales when really selling is serving but how do you do that offer? How do you incorporate that in without making it seem like, oh, I was really just here to sell to you when, because the offer is at the end? Well, think about it like this. You've just spoken to an audience. You've inspired them. They're excited about what you're talking about. And then you say, okay, thank you. Goodbye. And there's nothing there at the end. There, you've left the audience hanging. You've taken them somewhere and they, the people that need you will want more. So when you make an offer... Consider it like this. You're simply making an invitation. You're just giving people an invitation if they want more. There is no selling that is taking place. If you're going to invite somebody to have a conversation with you about how you could fast track that your success, whether it's branding or marketing or mindset or whatever, and that's all it is. And if you consider it as a simple invitation, then there is no sales involved. The sale comes later. And then if somebody's raised their hand, and said, I want to talk to you. Well, that's a big indicator that they're a potential client. So then actually, when you get on the call with that person, they've chosen to be on the call with you. You haven't dragged them there. They've raised their hand and said, me. Oh, I love that perspective. Yeah. And it's so true, right? I mean, once you get on that discovery call with someone that has, and I had this happen, I spoke in June and in August, I had five discovery calls for just from that one event. And I was like, pretty awesome. But it's, they already know you, they've already warmed up to you. They're excited to talk to you because now they've heard what you had to say. They already can feel that sense of connection and trust, right? Absolutely. And you know what? The leads that you get from speaking, you're, they're 60% of the way ready to say yes to you Mm. at the time they get on the call. And what you can do in 20 or 30 minutes on a stage, small stage, big stage, whatever you want, would take you months months posting online trying to create that connection that energy that emotional like you know to get people interested in what you have to offer but of course you need to have a talk that is built to convert 
you need to be talking about a big problem that you solve and a big payoff that they would get. And it's really good to have a pa- have a, a plan and a process that they're not going to be able to get anywhere else. And that's about branding as well, of course. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Which is my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now let's talk about this for just a second. So we talked about starting on small stages, moving to bigger stages as the opportunities arise and kind of designing those opportunities based on where we want to go and what we want to do with our life. So if we want to travel and all those glorious things, but tell me a little bit about pitching to organizations to get on their stage Mm. because you can't, most of the time you're not just invited to come and speak. Yes, that happens. But I think there's a lot of pitching that has to be done in order to get these speaking opportunities. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm not a fan of pitching for stages. It is a way that you can do it. It's just not the way that I did it. So I did it in a much more personal way that I would go to a networking event, for example. And if I felt like the people in the room were my kind of people and I you know, had a chat here and there and I felt, OK, I could really add value here. I would approach the organizer in person and I would tell them that I have just spent time hanging out with your audience. Many of them struggle with speaking. They don't know how to use it. I would love to come and share a free presentation on helping them unlock the power of speaking for their business. Is that something that you would be interested in? That would be my approach. And that approach right there, that got me on stages all over Ireland. In fact, sometimes if you ask for one stage, that could lead to anywhere up to six, 10, 12 stages. Uh Because if one person likes you, if you do a good job in one room, then you ask them then if they could introduce you to somebody else that they know who also runs events, well, then you're instantly booked at another event. So I'm a huge fan of getting your first two to three stages booked, however way you can, and then allow those stages to lead to your next stage. And as you would never leave the house without brushing your teeth, never leave an event that you spoke at without having leads for your next event to speak at. <laughs> Love it. It's true because there are so many networking organizations and especially just in the past couple of years, so many online virtual networking organizations have popped up. And if there are chapters or, you know, all over the place. So if there's one that maybe this person run one, runs one in Florida, somebody else is running one in the Northeast or in Ireland or the UK Absolutely. or somewhere. And so there are a lot of opportunities to be able to take one conversation and then have that open doors for multiple small or virtual stages. And there's even locally, I've spoken at multiple chapters of the polka dot powerhouse, you know, that's an organization here, a networking organization. And my audience is in that organization. So it's really easy. You know, you do one and then somebody is in attendance. Well, they happen to be part of another one and then they want to invite you to that one. So it's a great way to segue into increasing your audience and growing your opportunities. Absolutely. If you're serious about this, then just keep saying yes to the opportunities you get and you will find a thread. That thread could take you all over the world. And that's what happened with me. I found a thread here in a very small, tiny corner of Ireland. And that one thread took me to stages all over the country. There's 26 counties in Ireland. I ended up speaking in 19 of them. I averaged on getting about two clients every time I spoke. That was 50 clients. At the time, I had a 5K offer. That was 250,000. Not all at once. But that was the revenue for my business for over a year. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I say it's the most powerful marketing tool that you could have. Okay, so my last question is this. So if you're not being paid to come and speak, but your payment is through the offer that you make and the leads that you bring into your business that then convert to clients... What about travel expenses and all of those things? Because what you're encouraging women to do is get these opportunities and create their destiny, create their lifestyle based on these speaking opportunities. What about the travel expenses? Or is that something you just eat knowing that the revenue is going to come in on the backside? Absolutely. So if I'm speaking and, you know, I'll give you an example. I spoke at an event in New York a couple of years ago before the pandemic And I was paying to speak on this particular stage. And then I was like, okay, so I would never have made the decision to do that had I not been a seasoned speaker. And I knew that every time I spoke, I was going to get like two or three clients and I did the numbers. And I was just like, okay, if I even get two clients, I'm still like killing it here. So I'm totally going to do it. So I wouldn't advise that you you do that until you're seasoned at speaking. 
But when it comes to the travel expenses, I mean, mostly your travel expenses up front aren't that much. You're looking at about 1000 to 1500 Even me going to America, it was never that much, but I was always sure of the money when I got there. Now, what I would do to make absolutely sure that this was going to be covered, then if I know what event I'm speaking at, I would then leverage that event to see if I could build in other events around it and get other speaking gigs around it and not bank on just that one making like making sure that one because you just never know like people might not show up or there could be a hurricane or like whatever I don't know so I would always make sure if I was traveling to another country that I wasn't doing it for one stage I was doing it for at least three or four and it's always easier to get a stage in in a city where you're already booked because you just need to say hey the polka dots have booked me for this stage on this day and I'm in town anyway I would love to come and speak to your organization and then Uh people are like the person is like oh well if this company thinks she's good enough, she's good enough for us too. Mm-hmm. So now, okay, last question. I know I said that was the last question. This is the last question. So you're talking about these opportunities. How do you find these opportunities? How mm-hmm. do you I mean, like p- go to them and say X, Y, Z, or has this all been word of mouth? Or is there a like a data bank of speaking opportunities that you can go to? There's so many data banks for speaking opportunities these days. Like I can give you like two or three right now that would be my go-to. And that's just one way. So there's speakertunity.com, like an amazing service there that they provide all sorts of leads for speaking, like almost for every possible like speaking possibility. They're going to be there. There's also what was it called? Speaker Tunity. So like opportunity, but speaker tunity. Oh, tuner tea. Okay. Speaker I'll, I'll look at the I'll put, Perfectly. Perfect. I'll put the, the links in the show notes. That's why I wanted to make sure I knew what you were saying. Yeah. Speaker Trinity. And then there's also a really great newsletter that goes out with Innovation Women. That's a paid newsletter. I think it's something like 40 something dollars a month. But she sends out, Bobby Charlton sends out like a list of 50, 40 to 50 speaking engagements every month. So there's wow. lots of lists like that. But then it's like, you know, where do you love to hang out? Like where, like, where do you love to go? Because generally we want to go where our clients go because, you know, our avatars, they're a lot like us. So where do you make a list of all the places that you like to go, whether it's the spa, the Rotary Club, a book club, a networking group, whatever, and start there because that's so much easier. And like I said, you know, those stages can lead to other stages. And then, of course, you can jump onto Google and you can start searching on Google. And that's literally what I did. Oh, I love that. All right. Moira, this has been fabulous. I love this topic and you have given us, oh my gosh, a wealth of information. So do you have any last like empowering messages that you want to give the audience? And then with that, we'll close out and have you tell the listeners where they can connect with you, learn more from you and potentially work with you. Yeah, for sure. Well, what I would say is don't wait to get started. Get started right now. Like, please don't wait to be perfect and polished because perfect and polished does not equate profits. You want to be happy with good enough right now. And I guarantee you that if you're listening to this and if it's in your heart to do this, you can do this. So just trust yourself to do it. Get the opportunity to speak and then get yourself ready for that opportunity. It's very hard to get ready for an event if you don't know what the event is. And people are spending their lives getting ready. So that's what I would say to that. Just get started. And then, yeah, if your listeners are listening and they want to like go into this in more detail and you want to like really spend time like digging into what would a talk look like for you? Like what like what how could you infuse your brilliance into your your speaking, your story, all those things. Every single month, Robin, I host a challenge called the Dial in Your Destiny Challenge. And this is really my way of sharing with people my framework for speaking, how to create a high ticket offer, how to then get booked worldwide and creating that dream destiny lifestyle. So I share all my formulas with that and it happens every month. So I'd be very surprised if there isn't one going on now, if anybody wants to check. So it's dialinyourdestinychallenge.com. Okay, awesome. I will put those links in the show notes, everyone, so you can easily access that and join Moira. That's something that I'm taking a writing class right now. So my, I don't have time to do that, but that sounds like something that I'm going to, I'm going to mark earmark in my calendar to make sure I follow up with you in the new year to, to do, because that sounds fabulous. 
Okay, that is it for today, everyone. Be sure and check out the show notes. And like I said earlier in the episode, be sure to go over to Facebook and check out the new Facebook group, Purpose to Results Method. And also subscribe to the email list so you get those journal prompts every single Monday morning and you can start your week off great, inspired, and ready to take positive action. Have a great week, everyone, and we'll see you next time. And that's a wrap, friends. If you enjoyed this episode and found the information helpful, please take a moment to subscribe and leave a rating and review. That would mean the world to me. If you know someone who could use the information shared today, please share the episode with them too. And let's connect. You can find me on Instagram, Clubhouse, Facebook, and LinkedIn as The Robin Graham. Lastly, if you'd like more information on personal branding and brand marketing strategies, be sure to join my email list and the Female Entrepreneur Insider Facebook group. We are there every week with tips and trainings to help you build a solid foundation for brand and business success. And don't forget, on the website, you can find a plethora of free resources. Go to therobingraham.com forward slash resources and download any of the free resources that I have created to help you build a personal brand that stands out and makes an impact. Until next time, remember to smile.